Good morning, Instagram, and good morning, Facebook. We're going live for coffee and questions this morning. And today's theme is Olympic distance. Well, it's triathlon race nutrition, really, but just to celebrate the launch of my new Olympic distance race nutrition program, which I'm actually sending out today. So if you want access to the Olympic distance race nutrition program, uh, you need to put your name on the wait list because those people are getting access to it today. Um, and they're going to get a sweet discount too. So make sure your name is on that wait list because if you're not on the wait list, you don't get the discount and you don't get access today. <laughs> uh, so I'll link it in here for you so that you have the link uh, to join the wait list. Um, it's also in our Instagram bio um, and it's on our Facebook page at the moment. Uh, but I will pop it in uh, to the video as well. So I spent all last week getting this done um, and I'm so excited to finally share it with you. It's been something that I've been wanting to do for so long um, and I just had a couple of people push me for it. So, um, hey Camino Apparel, how are you going? <laughs> um, so yeah, I pulled my finger out and I got, got my shit together and I actually filmed it and it's now live for you ready. So. Waitlist people get it today um, with a special discount. Otherwise, the rest of you will have access to it towards the end of the week. So if you're doing Malulba, uh, then it's a perfect time and opportunity for you to just get stuck into your race nutrition now. Um, so you've still got a couple of weeks to practice, which is good. Um, um, or if you're doing any other Olympic distance racing coming up as well. So basically go through everything you need to know about Olympic distance race nutrition, the week, including the week living in. Hey, Steph. How are you going? Shouldn't you be at work, Steph? <laughs> um, everything you need to know heading into a race. So the, the race week, what you need to be doing, what you're doing the day before, I help you work through a specific carb learning plan for you, um, as well as what you do pre-race, and then bike nutrition, run nutrition, recovery nutrition, some hydration, and then overall my tips as, as a sports dietitian for how to manage a triathlon race. So. I guess for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm the dietitian that looks after Triathlon Australia. There's two of us. And I've been looking after the Australian Triathlon and Paratriathlon team for the past six years. So I guess triathlon is really my jam. I look after um, the elite guys, as well as in my private practice, I work with all of the age groupers. Uh, so there's a really cool breadth of like um, skill and expertise and um, time in the sport. Uh, and I guess you get access to that elite level sports nutrition, um, even if you're uh, just in the age group field. So one of the biggest mistakes I see people make all the time in private practice is that they just don't have a plan for racing. Um, and so you just put yourself into a massive hole in the race. A lot of people will come and see me because they've cramped towards the back end of the run or they've just really faded. They've had not enough energy to get through the, the 10K run, um, especially in hot races. Um, and then also just falling into a massive hole after the race. So uh, there's quite a few things that you can do to set up your nutrition to one, feel good in the race uh, and actually enjoy yourself out there. And then also having really good recovery practices so that you don't fall into a hole after the race. Uh, and you can keep either just training gently or helping you build into the, into the, next, um, into the next event rather than getting sick and getting run down and then putting yourself on the back foot a little bit. So that's my Olympic distance race nutrition program. I'm pretty excited for it to be out and about. Um, and I'm looking forward to you all having access to it for either today or later on in the week. All right, so let's get stuck into some coffee and questions. Questions. We had some good questions today. Um, and if you've seen my Instagram stories, you would have seen some of the spam questions that come through as well. I have no idea what is going on with the gram to have spam questions in those things it's quite frustrating spam seems to infiltrate everything which is annoying um, but the first question comes from uh, someone that wants to know whether they should be taking magnesium or products like prepped um, uh, in the pre-race sort of period so I've actually got some prepped here um, they were at our sports dietitian conference uh, when was it October November end of last year um, so I've got a couple of samples if anyone wants to try them 
so for those of you that don't know what prepped is, I might actually write a blog or film a video or product review or something on prepped, but it's actually, um, there's two, there's a prime and a something to have for recovery, but the prime, the idea is that you have it six to 18 hours before an event to help with fluid absorption really. So it's based on a resistant starch. Um, it's a patented resistant starch. I couldn't even tell you what it is necessarily, potentially the modified corn starch that's in here. And the premise of resistant starch is that it actually helps you to absorb fluid in your gut. So in your large intestine, you absorb more fluid and hold on to that. So it helps with overall hydration. So they're like, Theoretically, there's certainly um, potential benefit in a product like this. Um, we're doing, well not we, but the AIS slash Sport Australia. Hey Catherine, <laughs> welcome. Um, Sport Australia is doing a big hyper hydration study at the moment because we're heading into Tokyo, which is meant to be a hot race. Um, and they're testing things like sodium loading, resistant starch, um, glycerol, and a few other products um, to see what's actually the best in terms of hydration or prehydration. Uh, so I'll let you know when we know the outcomes from that, which is pretty exciting. Um, but if you want to try a product like this, you could. I'd probably suggest you work with someone to work through a bit of a plan. Um, the recommendations are six to 18 hours before your event. Uh, so I guess it depends on who you are and what type of event you're doing and what the actual goal of the event is. Like, do you need to hyperhydrate or is it going to be like freezing um, for whether you would use it? And the other thing is that if you have a sensitive gut, like I probably would try it in training and see how you go because it's got a few sort of uh, things in here that, here that could be an issue. So this one in particular... It's got apple juice concentrate. So if you don't tolerate sorbitol, that's not going to feel so great. Um, and then the other one has also got, I'm pretty sure, apple juice concentrate. Yep. Uh, so I'd have a look and see and try this sort of stuff first, just in terms of gut tolerance, and then you could work through some hydration stuff. But I'd probably suggest you work with someone like a sports dietitian to work through a plan to see if you are somebody that responds to something like this or you don't respond to it and it actually makes you worse. So that is that has potential. The other part was should you take magnesium before? I don't think there's any evidence around taking magnesium before exercise. There's not even a lot of evidence around magnesium um, for uh, cramp management anyway. A lot of people will take it and they um, they they think they have an effect, so they continue to take it, and that's completely fine. There's kind of no harm in taking magnesium, um, but I don't think there's a lot of evidence around it being beneficial. So I don't know if I would necessarily... Um, hi, Marcia. <laughs> I don't know if I would necessarily take it pre. Um, you could if you wanted to, but I just don't think it's got a magic pill for anything. Um, I'll have a look and see if there's any new research in that area, but from memory, I don't know if there's anything. So if anyone does know of anything, send it through and I'll have a read. All right, the next question comes from Jules, one of my clients. Jules has just done Geelong 70.3 and she's obviously sick of sweet things because Jules wants to know what other options there are for gels and blocks in a 70.3 run um, other than even just drinking Coke. So when you're running, you have way less tolerance for nutrition than cycling. Uh, so you've kind of got to rely on those easy to digest, um, easy to consume options. So things like gels and blocks and lollies, sports drink, water, coke, like liquids. Uh, in terms of other options that aren't sweet, there's certainly things you could try. So off the top of my head, we've got things like Vegemite, we've got ginger. You've also got things like mashed potato gels, jewels. And if you've got my Feel Your Adventure book, there's some recipes for some savoury things in there. So there's definitely a recipe for... A mashed potato gel uh, which you could try which could be a good option that you're taking for a 70.3 run and that would be super easy to digest it could be pretty easy to consume as well you've just got to formulate it in a certain way that you're not taking a potato out for a run uh, there's a few specific strategies to implement to make that work for you so that one it's providing fuel and two it's actually easy to digest and easy to consume when you're running um, 
or the other option for you, Jules, might be just to rely on liquids only in the run. So things like sports drinks, and we could talk through how to do that. Um, finding a sports drink that you like the flavour of, that's not too sweet. Um, and we can maximise each mouthful there. So there's definitely options in the run that aren't sweet. Unfortunately, most of the sports nutrition products are quite sweet. Um, there used to be a Vegemite gel, but that doesn't exist anymore. Um, but there's no reason that you couldn't sort of uh, create your own something like that. <laughs> did potatoes. <laughs> so Ali just said that my friend did take potatoes at Husky on the weekend. Look, you can take potatoes. Potatoes aren't actually that high in carbohydrate. So like a medium potato has got about 15 grams of carbs. Okay, so that's half of the gel. So you're just going to have to eat a buttload of potatoes to actually get some, <laughs> to, get some uh, to get some fuel out of that. So yeah, if you want a mashed potato gel recipe, have a look at um, the Fuel Your Adventure book. I'll link the link to get that in this as well. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Um, and then Catherine also said, ugh, ginger. So ginger is a really good palate cleanser. Um, whether you like it or not, even just having a small amount of like crystallized ginger or just um, those Fudrum ginger bear lollies. Um, <laughs> oh, Ali, Ali just said, yep, a bit uncomfortable running with spuds in your pants. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Who, Ali, have you got a photo of this person that ran with potatoes? Because I would love to see it. <laughs> I would love to see the race nutrition strategy for one, where to store it, two, how many there were, <laughs> uh, and how they went in their race. That's hilarious. Uh, but, you know, savoury, whatever works. <laughs> um, so, yeah, ginger, really good palate cleanser. So if you're sick of sweet um, and you just need a bit of a palate refresh, then like ginger ale you could do that with. Um, or actual ginger, um, particularly good in longer distance events where you do just get sick of um, sweet. And Catherine's just reminded me that there are some ginger um, energy balls in my Fuelier Adventure book as well. Um, so you could have a go at taking those. Uh, so they're formulated by me, an advanced sports dietitian, so that they've actually got some fuel in them. Oh, she won her age group. Man, killing it. <laughs> Uh, she must be doing something right. <laughs> maybe you should, Ali, maybe you should tell her about the mashed potato gel. <laughs> it might just revolutionise her life. And instead of coming 10th female overall, maybe she'll win female overall. <laughs> uh, all right, and Catherine, I definitely think you should try the ginger. Um, just a little bit. Like, I'm not a big fan of ginger either. Um, but in that state, in the end of races, when your mouth's manky anyway, um, a bit of a palate cleanse is is um, doesn't doesn't go astray. So definitely give it a go or try ginger ale. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ellie. Well, this is the best coffee and questions so far. <laughs> Spuds in your pants. Definitely need a photo of that. Um, all right. So should we move on? <laughs> that was a good one. So. Other options for things in the run other than gels and blocks and sweet things. So there's definitely stuff out there. Uh, turns out you can just run with potatoes and do okay. <laughs> or you can make my mashed potato gels. You could try ginger. You could try um, rice cakes. You could try Vegemite. There's so many different things. Uh, it's just figuring out a bit of a plan. So uh, I guess the number one rule of racing is, is never try anything new on race day. Um, so make sure whatever you're doing, if it's spuds in your pants or gels or whatever, that you are practicing in training. <laughs> All right. So next question came from somebody that wants to know what to have to eat before a race. So really good question. It depends on well, what the race is. So if we're talking specifically new, uh, triathlon nutrition, then you've got four different distances, right? You've got sprint, you've got Olympic, you've got 70.3 and you've got Ironman. So what you would have before um, each of those distances of races would differ slightly. Um, so if you're doing Olympic distance, I definitely give my Olympic distance race nutrition program a plug because uh, I go through specifically, we could have one lesson on what you do right before the race. Um, so including like your pre-race breakfast or pre-race meal, whatever it is, and then right up to, excuse me, right up to heading into your event. Um, so it is generally early. I've finished my coffee. I wish there was more. Um, 
depends on yeah the timing of the start so it's just getting the timing right depending on when your wave start is and working backwards um, um, and then it depends on the duration. So I'd be eating differently for an Ironman versus 70.3 versus Olympic versus sprint in a way. Um, but again, practice, practice, practice. Whatever your pre-race strategy is, you need to be practicing that in training, in like your big weekend sessions and your bricks and things like that so that you've got that timing right as well. So say if you want to eat sort of two to two and a half hours before, you try and do your pre-race breakfast two to two and a half hours before you, you actually go out and do a hard training session so that you're practicing that timing as well. Because yeah, like even an early race, you're still up a couple of hours before because you've got to get to transition um, and get all your stuff sorted before you actually head towards the race. Um, so there's going to be a few different strategies that you'll need to implement depending on well, distance one and two, two timing. All right, and then the last question, which is also a good one, although it's not racing related, is when to start nutrition in training. So again, this really depends on what sort of type of session we're talking about. Like I would feel differently for a, like a one or two hour run versus like a six hour ride. Uh, it also depends if you're eating before training or not. Um, depends on when you would start eating in training. So. Um, I would suggest if you're doing race nutrition practice sort of stuff, then you are starting to eat relatively quickly. Um, but again, it's, it's timing related. Depends what you've had beforehand. Um, oh, Catherine said, <laughs> I just noticed this. Catherine, when we're talking about pre-race breakfast, she said, I can answer this one. It doesn't matter because she'll be so nervous she can't eat it all anyway. <laughs> oh, hey Liv, welcome to the conversation. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's why you need to practice your pre-race nutrition, right? Um, so that you aren't nervous <laughs> or if you are nervous and you know that you're a nervous racer, then you go like a liquid option, like something like a smoothie and you just drink it and then you just try and chill. And if you're a really nervous racer, then maybe you don't have coffee in that instance as well because that's just going to make it worse. All right, good one, Catherine. You're so distracting over there. <laughs> but I'm loving this chat. Thank you. Thank you for being engaged. Um, hello Liv alright and so yeah when to start nutrition in training so there's no hard and fast rule one depends on how long the session is um, and two depends on if you've eaten before or not um, and then also three I guess it depends if you are um, practicing race nutrition strategies or not would depend on what you're doing so sorry I can't really answer that specifically no that's a bit of a cop out um, but I would be suggesting, sorry, not sorry. It's fine, Catherine. I love you anyway. <laughs> um, I'd be suggesting that instead of waiting till you're hungry, um, or waiting till you're starting to feel fatigued, that you are actually on the front foot with your nutrition, um, rather than being on the back foot, because then you're kind of getting into a bit of a hole. So you definitely want to be on the front foot. So maybe starting to eat before hour one, um, or definitely before you're starting to get hungry or before you're starting to feel a bit flat. Um, and then the amount that you eat in training really depends on what you're doing as well and where you are in the season. So a sports dietitian can help you with how much to have per hour and then work to train your gut tolerance up to have more nutrition per hour in a session as well so that you're practicing that for, for race nutrition as well. So yeah, big, broad question. Sorry that there's not a specific answer because it just depends on so many factors. Um, but if you want to reach out with the specific scenario, I can definitely help. Um, and yeah, give you some guidance on like what type of session it is when you would be doing. So a sports dietitian, that's exactly what we do. We're going to help you fuel training to know exactly what to eat when. So I caught up with one of my clients on the weekend um, and I, I asked her like, what's one of the best things I've ever taught you? And she said, just knowing what to eat when, you know, in terms of day-to-day um, -day fueling and nutrition to support overall training load. But then also number two, the biggest thing that I helped her with was um, knowing exactly what to eat in her big training sessions heading into an Ironman so that she didn't have to think about it. She had a plan for all of her big training sessions um, and that we trained her gut throughout the uh, 20 week Ironman build so that by the time she got to race day, she was like a, a fighting machine, like ready to fuel her race with no gut issues. 
smashed it, got through her first Ironman and absolutely loved it. So I guess that's the difference between having sports dietitian support um, and just winging it on your own uh, and not really having a plan, not having any structure and then um, going, oh shit, like a week before race, like what am I going to be doing? Because really you should have been thinking about that 20 weeks ago. All right. Um, Oh, Catherine, good one. Public service announcement. Remind everyone you can set alarms on your Garmin. I definitely always write that in my race plans, um, making sure that you do set an alarm to remind you to eat and drink in training uh, and racing as well because often we can get distracted um, or we forget or we're not hungry. So just setting an alarm is just a reminder to constantly keep up with nutrition. It's good to see that you listen to things when I talk to you, Catherine. <laughs> so much so that you're helping educate other athletes. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, guys, well, we might wind up coffee and questions um, unless anybody's got anything else funny to add. I don't think we can top the spuds in, in um, pants comment from Ali if she's still there. <laughs> that was gold. I think this has been my favourite coffee and questions so far. Uh, uh, so if you haven't <laughs> if you haven't seen any of the others, go back and watch them. But I think this one um, trumps <laughs> trumps <laughs> all the rest at the moment. Um, and then just a quick reminder: I'll link the wait list for our Olympic distance race nutrition program in here. Definitely get your name on that because I'm going to send that out today. Um, and the people on the wait list are getting a pretty sweet deal. So that's only available for wait list people. Otherwise, the rest of you can. Um, pay full price <laughs> all right what else are you saying Catherine am I even implementing earlier than 10 weeks out now I, do, I can't you need to fix your grammar and oh and I am even implementing earlier than 10 weeks out now. oh yes gotcha sorry <laughs> I just can't read so your Catherine is doing I man in Cairns in March April May June not too long Mm, what are we up to Catherine like 14 weeks away or something maybe pretty soon um, and yeah good to see that you're actually practicing your race nutrition early rather than last minute so that's excellent <laughs> all right team thanks for jumping on coffee and questions today it's been fun and don't forget to submit your questions next week and I'll answer them for you um, if there's any interest in prepped, um, give me a holler and I can write a blog or film a video or product review on this product um, if you want to know a bit more about it. 97 days away to Cairns. There you go. That's not very far away, is it? The time flies. That's like three months. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, team. I'll sign out now um, and I'll pop the link in here. Thanks, Ali. Thanks for getting on board. <laughs> You've been fun. <laughs> and definitely, Ali, don't forget to send me a photo of the potatoes in the, in the pants. I, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you next week for Coffee and Questions.